Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Painter Essentials 7 called Artisan Markers. This is a really fun brush category to work with, especially if you're familiar with working with what we call the Copic or uh, plain old markers. Um, we use them for mandalas, we use them for illustrations. They're really fun and wonderful uh, brushes to work with. So let's get started. Um, the very first brush I want to talk about is the blending marker, and we'll come back to that when I show you some blending. Uh, I did want to show you the calligraphy brush, and it's just a very nice little brush that you can use to create calligraphy shapes, whether it's um, you know more of a um, penmanship. I'd like to show you the calligraphy marker brush category first. Um, it's just a nice, easy flowing brush that you can use to, to make uh, nice cal calligraphy type marks on your um, canvas or for special projects that you're working on. Um, you see a lot of um, cal calligraphy work going on right now and it's, it's a great brush to use for that. So check it out, give it a try, calligraphy marker. The extra fine tip brush is uh, exactly what it says. It's a very fine tip marker brush and um, we use it uh, for very detailed areas. Um, I used it a lot when I was creating this sketch and getting this going and um, you can see that it's just a very, very nice brush to use for overall sketching and um, for your illustrations. So check that one out. Now I want to get into the finer details of talking about uh, marker pens and one of the um, cardinal rules so to speak of working with markers. When you're working with a marker it will build upon itself in terms of color. So for example if I take this uh, area of foliage here and I'm working on a layer and um, I'm going to go ahead and bring that layer up to full opacity right now so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to start my first brush stroke here laying it down and you can see that it's relatively light as I start to go over these areas I'm not lifting my stylus from my tablet okay that's real important here when I lift my stylus up from my tablet and I go over those same areas again, you can see that the marker starts to build on itself. It starts to get darker and more saturated. So this is the real key to working with marker brushes. You want to make sure that you're um, working on a layer very important and that you build color on those layers. So every stroke that I make, this I'm not lifting my stylus off of my tablet. Now I've lifted it, gone back over that same area again and you can see how that area is getting darker in value. So every time I do it's going to get darker and darker. Okay, so that's real important when you're working with these brushes. It's the number one rule. <laughs> so remember that when you're working with layers also, you can bring down that opacity. So if you're looking to maybe push an area back a little bit and you want it to look more distant, but the colors seem a little too saturated for you, just go ahead and bring the opacity down on the layer and you can achieve that effect right away, okay? Now I'll add a new layer here and we'll go to the next brush, which is the hatching marker. marker. And we'll do some blue up in the sky to kind of demonstrate this brush. I'm kind of going up and down and back and forth and I've changed the rotation of the brush a little bit and I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. So you can see that it creates kind of a hatching effect. So it's a really nice brush to use for that. So that is the hatching marker. 
The Magic Flat 2 is a flat marker, so it means that it's going to cover a lot of real estate for you right away. So when you're looking to uh, pull in an area where you need to cover a lot, remember I'm not taking my pressure off the tablet. I'm keeping this at one continual brush stroke. Maybe do something like that. Now, when I lift my stylus up and I go back over that area, you can see that I'm darkening that value again. Now, with that said, let's go right back up to that blending marker so I can show you how this would come into play here. So if you have some of these hard edges that you need to blend a little bit, then go ahead and use that blending marker to soften those edges. And you can see you can kind of pull the color out a little bit, but notice how the edges are becoming nice and soft. So it's almost like you're working with a very wet edged blender. Okay, so that's important here. But now I've really minimized that hard line there and created a softer transition. To the next area that I'm going to be working on. And you may not want uh, hard edges everywhere, okay, so that's important. You might want a hard edge in one part of the illustration, a softer edge in another part. So this will do the trick for you for those creating those softer edges. Okay, the, uh, let's see, the magic a flat eraser. So if I wanted to go in here and do a little erasing in certain areas, I can do that. Might have areas where the marker paint has gone into areas where I don't want it to go. So I would use this brush to take out those areas. And again, you can still take your magic blender and still go back over those areas and soften them if you need to as well. The magic marker, this is one of my favorite brushes. Um, I just love the way it, the ink comes in, the marker. And again, I'm working kind of in a circular fashion here not taking any, I'm not lifting my brush from the tablet. I'm really just letting this kind of flow in here. And maybe I'll go over here. Now when I pick up my stylus and I go back into those areas, you can see now that I can darken those areas, and that's what you want to try to achieve. So light and dark values, you know, being able to get your shadows in, in a very illustrative quality. Okay, that's Magic Marker. The Sandy Marker is a, um, let me go to a little different color here. This one picks up a lot of paper texture. So when you open your little tech paper panel here, you can pick up a different texture and that texture will come through as you put in your marker brush marks. So this is, you know, I'm thinking about how to use this in this, you know, what if I wanted to add a little texture to her pants here? Or we want to do some texture to um, the blue jeans. And we can add that anywhere where you're looking to add some extra texture. Sandy marker. And the last brush is sketch. And this one again is just a really nice little sketching brush. Has a lot of texture to it. Um, 
very expressive and just a good one for finishing off your illustrations if you need to. Um, again, as you go over areas, picking up my stylus, that area is going to get darker and darker in value. Now when I lift it and go back over it, you can see the value changing there. Let's make a nice big brush. Maybe go over this area. Lift my stylus and maybe I add some different values here and you can see that it starts getting darker. And lift my stylus, go back over it and darker. And you can cover a lot of area here. This is a little too dark. And again, I'm not lifting my stylus up. I'm just going to cover this area in. Going up the stairs. Smaller brush, lifting my stylus, darker value. Okay, so those are the artisan markers for painter essentials and have a lot of fun with them. They're really great to work with, a lot of fun, and I know you'll create some beautiful, amazing things with them. Take care.